Well, good morning and welcome. I want to wish you all a happy new year on this January 1st day. We do have a few announcements we're going to go over this morning. If you want to grab your bulletins and follow along with me, they're a pretty short list today. Um, for those that are joining us on social media today, it's Communion Sunday, so if you want to get some elements together during this time, during the announcements, to join us later for Communion, uh, please do that. Um, today's typical both Sunday services, we're going to go through, so you'll see that at the first. No Awana this week, so if your kids or grandkids are in Awana, there will not be Awana this Wednesday. Um, women's meeting is at 9 a.m., and there will be a baby shower for the Young Bowers at 10 a.m. on January 14th. So if you want to be a part of that, come and join them for that. Uh, January 15th, make a note of that. Uh, that is the annual meeting and there'll be a lunch potluck that day. Uh, come join and be a part of that as we go through the business side of stuff on uh, January 15th. And uh, a couple, there's some beautiful flowers up here. Uh, they're in memory of Dee Dee Neal. Her funeral was held here yesterday. Uh, they left a wonderful bouquet in memory of her, so just take note of that. Um, there will be no snacks in the back in the fellowship hall today, but there is a cake back there. Um, feel free to stay and enjoy a piece of cake today um, and uh, eat it back here in the fellowship hall, wherever you'd like, but there'll be cake available. If you look down at the prayer focus, you'll see a big list, an ever-growing and changing list. Um, Edith Esler uh, was admitted into the St. Cloud Hospital uh, so if you want to make a note of that, add her to your prayer focus and be praying for Edith. Um, that's a, a change there. But you can see all the people on there, all the names, all the issues, all the disease, cancer, hurts, mourning, just so much hurt. Um, New Year, we started off, so let's just be in prayer for all them folks. Be reading that prayer focus and praying for them folks. Um, and uh, let's go to prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for able to come together to gather, to lift and praise your holy name. Be with Pastor Jim as he brings us a message this morning. As we start this new year, just be with us through this year. Have this be a year, Lord, that we just can be the light in this community to, to guide us and direct us and move us in the way you'd have us move. And just bring all glory to you through it all. Uh, we need your power. We need your spirit through it all, God. And we just ask for that today on this beginning of January 1st, 2023. Be with us today as we go out and our celebrations and stuff that we have today be with the worship team as we lift and praise your holy name and all the folks in the church that are doing all their part behind the scenes and especially the churches in our community lord that are just doing and serving and doing your will also be with them join them this morning and let's just around the world around the globe praise your holy name today lord god we love you and we pray for all the folks on the prayer focus, all the struggles, all the needs, all the hurts. You know every story. Be with them today. Give them comfort and give them peace in their time of hurt and struggle. Lord God, we love you. We trust in you in all of this. And we pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. We will welcome our praise team forward if you want to welcome the folks sitting around you this morning. We're going to start with All Glory Be to Christ.
say, Father, you alone are worthy. We thank you, Father, for this place that we can come together and sit in the peace and holiness of who you are. Thank you, Almighty God, for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for what you're going to do in this new year, Lord. We just pray now for our pastor as he brings us your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. And the uh, little children that want to go to Children's Church, you're dismissed also. I love the words of that song. They come from Revelation 5. When John is in the presence of the uh, living God, in the throne room of God, and he sees the scroll with seven seals, and the angel asks, who is worthy to open the scroll? And in the account in Revelation 5, no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll. And the Bible says, and I, this is John, wept. Because no one, it seemed, was worthy to open the scroll. But like the song we just sang said, he is worthy. Amen? He is worthy. Jesus. Jesus is worthy. I want to welcome you online today and, and uh, bid all of you today here in person and online. Happy New Year. I'll say this too. Um, Casey mentioned it. There is in fact cake in the foyer after this service for you to uh, enjoy. That cake is... Uh, on behalf of Casey and Kim, today is Casey's first day on the job here at Motley Free Methodist. He's a little embarrassed to say that cake's for me. But uh, that's what it's for. So you enjoy some cake between the services. And like Casey said, you can enjoy it down here. You can go up to the fellowship hall. And, but uh, that, that's what it's for. And please uh, be in prayer for Casey and Kim as uh, they become part of our staff here, especially Casey. But uh, when we hire Casey, Kim gets along, comes along too. <laughs> well, it's January 1st. Can you believe it? You look at the calendar, it says 2023. <clears throat> and we all know this. And it seems like we probably say it every year. It seems like every year just goes faster and faster and faster. But here we are on January 1st, 2023. And I want to challenge us with a couple of, uh, couple of challenges today for the new year. But let me say this before we start. Casey mentioned it. Two weeks from today is our annual meeting. And uh, I will share in this part of that Sunday, both services, some of the blessings and mercies of God and the highlights from this last year. I will share that more on that day for two reasons. One, I want to give God glory for His goodness. And, and two, I know that some of you may not be able to come to the uh, lunch. I hope that you can in meeting, but I'll share a bunch during the uh, morning sessions before the potluck meal and the meeting, but I do want you to know you're all invited to that. We'll have lunch after the second service, and then we'll have our business meeting, our annual meeting after that. During that meeting this year, we'll be uh, electing three Board of Administration positions and re-electing or electing a delegate to our conference, and so I just want you to know you're all invited. And uh, if you're members here, obviously you've got a voice and you're going to be picking these new Board of Administration and Delegate positions. But uh, even if you're not an official member, you're surely invited to that uh, dinner and meeting. With that said, I just want to say to begin uh, this new year, I'm so thankful to God for His blessings. We look back on last year and there's been challenges there's been valleys, but I just want to thank God for his blessings. 
I'll mention some of those in two weeks, some of the highlights, but God has been faithful. He's been faithful for, to us through it all, and I hope that we're mindful of that. I want to start with a quote today, then we're going to go to Scripture. We're going to go to Matthew, or Micah, chapter 6. But I want to, before I get there, I want to start with this, this quote from C.S. Lewis. I saw it online this past week. A couple people posted this, and I thought, man, how fitting is that for January 1st, the first Sunday of a brand new year. Here's the quote that I saw from C.S. Lewis. If you live for the next world, you get this one in the deal. But if you live only for this world, you lose them both. C.S. Lewis said that a long time ago. Think that through a little bit. If you live for the next world, you get this one in the deal. But if you live only for this world, you lose them both. It's a good reminder for us on the beginning of a brand new year. We are called by God to live for Him, to be Holy Spirit led, to be students of the Bible, to be followers of Jesus Christ. And, and maybe, maybe as we begin this new year, it's a time to commit to living for the next world and for Jesus more than we have been. All right. Micah chapter 6. If you've got your Bible, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. A couple words different than from your New King James or, or King James, but it's, it's clear. It's clear what is being said here in Micah chapter 6. The first part of it is the Lord's case, if you will, against Israel. The second part of the verses is Micah's reply. Micah chapter 6, New Living Translation. Listen to what the Lord is saying. And this is the word of, this is the word of God here now, the, the voice of God. Stand up and state your case against me. He's speaking to Israel. I'll give you a little more of the history in just a minute. But God is speaking to the northern ten tribes of Israel. Remember, we have Judah and we have Israel after the split from, from David and Solomon. He's speaking to the northern ten tribes. And he's saying to them, <coughs> Stand up and state your case against me. Let the mountains and hills be called to witness your complaints. And now, O mountains, listen to the Lord's complaint. He has a case against his people. Note too, as I read these eight verses in Micah 6, the similarities of America today. When God is calling Israel to account, and Micah then in response, notice the parallel and the similarities for America today. And now God, again verse 2, And now, O mountains, listen to the Lord's complaint. He has a case against his people. He will bring charges against Israel. And then God says this, he might as well be saying it to us today. Oh my people, what have I done to you? Look at the heart of God here. Longing to love, longing to lead, longing for his people to follow. And he says, oh my people, what have I done to you? What have I done to make you tired of me? Answer me, he said. For I brought you out of Egypt. Yes, that's a thousand years when you, chronologically, when you look at this, 750 years before. Long, long time, but he's reminding them because this is his people and they know what he's done. For I brought you out of Egypt. I redeemed you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, <clears throat> excuse me, and Miriam to help you. Don't you remember my people? This is God pleading with his people, and he may as well be doing it with us today. Don't you remember how King Balak of Moab tried to have you cursed, and how Balaam, son of Beor, blessed you instead? And remember your journey from Acacia Grove to Gilgal? 
When I, the Lord, did everything I could to teach you about my faithfulness. And God could say the same thing to us today. And so the Lord's case against Israel, what have I done to make you tired of me, he said. And we might say, well, what do you mean tired? And, and we could simply say, well, he could say, you must be tired of me because you're not following me anymore. And then we get to the second part of Micah 6 when we get Micah's reply. What can we bring to the Lord? Should we bring our burnt offerings? Should we bow before God most high with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sin? And Micah says, no. No, O people. The Lord has told you what is good. And this is is what he requires of you. Some of your Bibles, that first phrase, will say to act justly. The New Living says to do what is right. That is what the Lord requires of us. To do what is right. To love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's what Micah says to Israel. Shall we bring 10,000 calves He says, this is what the Lord has required of you. To act justly or to do what is right. To love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I don't know if I've got time today because we're going to do communion today. But I want to give you a little bit of background to know where he's coming from. Biblically and historically speaking, Micah is a prophet. Came into uh, being a prophet at 742 B.C. That's the time he was speaking to the northern ten tribes. And if you know anything about the separation after David and Solomon, there was a separation. King Jeroboam was the king of the northern kingdoms. If you know anything about that, you know that King Jeroboam set up not one, but two golden calves and said, These are your gods that brought you from Egypt, O Israel. And so for the next 175 years, from the time that King Jeroboam did that, to this point, this ten tribes of Israel, God's people, had been hung up in idol worship. Oh yes, they would say, well give me a little God of this, or I'll give me a little God of that, if I'm in trouble I'll pray to God. But as a nation, the ten tribes had a major, major, major problem with idol worship. You can read more about that in 1 Kings chapter 12 if you'd like to. But my point is this. The similarities between that time and ours are striking. Idol worship for them was the order of the day. Every king in the northern ten tribes was evil. All you got to do is read the history of Kings and Chronicles. Every one of them. And so I give you this little bit of background to bear in mind the similarities of that time and our time. No, we're not Israel and no, we're not Jewish, most of us by blood. But America has been a nation that has been a nation, one nation under God. And idol worship has gotten in the way. Idol worship was the order of the day for them and it was always competing with their allegiance to God. And it seems that's the order of today for multitudes of America. The idols of the day are always competing for our allegiance to God. That's the setting where Micah says what he says, where God says what he says and then Micah says what he says. You say, Jim, I don't bow down to idols. We're bowing down to the idol of self in America like never before. I need my rights. I want my rights. I deserve my rights. 
We're bowing down to the idols of pleasure and pride and greed and lust and sex and money and power and all the rest. And all of that is competing with our allegiance to God. God has every right and prerogative to tell us today the same that he asked them so long ago. He has every right to say to us, what have I done to you? What have I done to make you tired of me? Answer me. He has every right. The answer, quite frankly, is God has done nothing wrong. It was the northern ten tribes and their idol worship and our society today in our allowing the idols of the day to squeeze our allegiance to God out. God could give us a list a mile long in America how he has blessed us and taken care of us and provided for us and protected us and shown us his word. He could give us a, a list a mile long how he has loved us and cared for us. And we get to that response of Micah that says, what can we bring to the Lord? And for our thought process and our answer, we could say, how can I honor, praise, and worship and serve him this year? Shall I bring my burnt offerings? Shall I bow before God most high with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sin? And Micah says to all of that, no. No, oh people, the Lord has told you what he wants. The Lord has told us what is good and what he requires of us. Let me break those three down just for a few minutes. I don't have a lot of time because we're going to go to communion. But I want to emphasize for a moment, this is a heart issue. When Micah says, no, he's not asking for the burnt offerings. He's not asking for the rivers of oils. He's not asking for this. He's, he's asking us to act justly, to do what's right, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. This is a heart issue. This is not mechanical. This is because I love him. To do what is right. I love the way the New Living says that. And that's why I chose the New Living translation today. Because he says to do what is right. And you might say, well, it's right according to what? According to his word. You could ask society. You could ask the government, what, what's right in their opinions, but he's saying to do what is right according to the word of God. If I claim the name of Jesus, if I claim him as Lord and Messiah, I am obligated and instructed both in the Old and the New Testament to walk in obedience to Christ and to his teachings and to the word of God. To do what is right is what God wants of his people. Now let me say two things about that and I'll move on. First, to do what is right today according to the word of God is going to be contrary to the world. Are you hearing me? To do what is right according to the word of God is contrary to the way the world is going. To do what is right for us, John says this way later in the New Testament, is to walk as Jesus walked, not like the world. And if I haven't been doing what was right according to the Word of God, maybe this new year is the time to start. Be committed by the leading of the Spirit, by the studying of Scripture, by the power of God to do what is right according to the Word of God. 
I don't have time to elaborate on that. I'm going to give you one example, then I'm going to move on. There's so many things that could be said about that. Doing what is right according to the Word of God versus the way the world is going. There's so many things that could be said. I'll give you one little, one little old example. Back in 1996, some of you remember President Bill Clinton signed into law the DOMA. Who remembers? Some of you weren't even born yet, but most of you, most of us were. The <clears throat> Defense of Marriage Act, 1996. Bill Clinton, not your most upstanding and moral individual, but signed into law the Defense, the Defense of Marriage Act. What that simply said was, marriage shall be one man and one woman in America. Just like it had been for thousands of years in the past. In the 90s, if you know anything about our history in America, you know that we're starting to get on a slippery slope in that topic. And so in 1996, President Bill Clinton signed the Defense of Marriage Act, which said man shall be, marriage shall be one man and one woman, 1996. On December 13th, 2022, President Joe Biden signed into law Respect for Marriage Act, taking away the definition as one man and one woman to include lots of other scenarios. I give you that one example because let us not be confused to do what is right when Micah calls the church of God to do what is right. It's not always going to be in line with what the government says is right. And I'm not anti-government, but I'm saying there is a difference. To do what is right by the word of God is what Micah is saying. Just because the government says this is law... It may not be right according to the word of God. Michael also said, to love mercy. Jesus said it this way in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 and 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God has been very merciful to us in America. No one can dispute that. He has been very merciful to us. We deserve condemnation and His wrath. He has been merciful, and He calls us to love mercy. The Hebrew word for this is hesed, H-E-S-E-D, meaning a loyal love. That's what He calls us to, a loyal love, translated further, to carry through on their commitments to meet other people's needs. That's loving mercy. Why? Because I love Him. That's why. Are you with me this morning, friends? Out too late last night? No, you're still with me. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to go to communion in a minute. To do what is right is what God expects of us. To love mercy, to be merciful to others, to carry through on, their, on our commitment to help meet other needs and to walk humbly with our God. What does that mean? To walk humbly with our God. One of the commentators I read about that simply said, fellowship with God without arrogance. I say, Jim, what do you mean? He breaks it down further. For the alleged, alleged follower of Jesus, I'm a Christian. We can say that all day. I, I grew up in a Christian home. I live in a Christian nation, whatever. But for the alleged follower of Jesus to live like I want to live, to do what I want to do in disregard to the obedience to God is arrogance towards God. He has called us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ. That means leaving behind my old ways, my old desires, my old agenda. To walk humbly with our God means to fellowship with God without arrogance. In other words, to follow Him because I want to, no longer doing my own thing. 
Henry Blackaby sums up these verses like this, and then I'll close. God never conceals his expectation from us. Amen? Blackaby is right. God's expectation of us is clear in this. So Blackaby says, God never conceals his expectation from us. We never have to guess how we should live in Christ. In response to the misguided ways in which people sought to please God, Micah clearly explains what God does and does not expect. That's what Micah does in these verses. Blackaby goes on, God requires us to walk humbly with Him. God does not ask for the spectacular acts of service. He asks us for humility and walking with Him. And lastly, Blackaby says, at times we try to make the Christian life far more complicated than it is. If we strive to be completely obedient to the basics, the more complex assignments will become clear, end quote. And so on this first day of a brand new year, may we remember the words of Micah in response to God's question, what have I done that you basically turned my back on you? Micah says, shall we bring 10,000 gallons of oil? Shall we bring our firstborn to sacrifice them for sin? Our sin, and Micah says, no, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. To act justly, or in New Living Translation, to do what is right according to his word. To love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. May that be our aim in 2023. Amen? Amen? Okay. We're going to spend some time in preparation for communion. And so I shall read a few verses from 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broken, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he also took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant established by my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then Paul says this, Whoever eats and drinks, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. And then he challenged us we should examine ourselves. So let a person examine himself. And in this way he should eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why so many are sick and ill among you and many have even fallen asleep. And so we're going to take a moment simply in quiet prayer, just you and the Lord, in preparation for the elements of the cup and the bread, examining ourselves, confessing anything that needs to be confessed, coming to the Lord's table in a manner, as Paul said, worthy to take the elements. Let's pray together quietly, silently for a moment.
Thank you again, Lord, for the body and blood of Jesus. Thank you for the chance to celebrate communion on this first Sunday of 2023. Thank you for what these elements stand for. The broken body of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the blood that he shed for our sin. As we partake in these elements today, we say thank you. We say forgive us of our sin. We say we remember, just as Jesus instructed, do this in remembrance of me, we remember the body and blood of Jesus. We remember your love, O God, to give us your son. We do all these things this morning in celebration of Jesus to remember. And so as we take this cup and as we take this bread, we give you thanks, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. We'll pass these elements out to you and then we'll partake of them together. Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, this is my body that is broken for you as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me.
The Bible also says after supper he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn. Thank you again, Lord, for walking with us this past year. Thank you for what lays ahead. Will you guide us by your Spirit, Father, to a closeness to you that is absolutely transformational, absolutely profound? Will you help us, Father, to be completely surrendered to the leading of your Spirit, completely surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Will you help us, Father, as Micah reminds us, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before you? Will you lead us in this endeavor this year? Will you use us for your glory? Will you fill us and revive us with your spirit? Will you help us to love you passionately and love our neighbors as ourselves? Go before us in this new year, Father, we pray for the glory of God, for the furthering of your kingdom, for the salvation of souls. Go before us, we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.